Well, hey there, and welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse here in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I am tickled pink that you stopped into craft and spend a little time with me today. This week, I've been working on some cute little thrift flips and upcycles to resell, and I hope you're going to like them. Let's jump right in. The first thing that I've got is these two vintage rolling pins. These things have seen many years of rolling out them biscuits, baby. But now it's time to retire them and make them pretty so that they can just be decor for somebody. The first one, I'm going to use this gorgeous color called Water Lily by DIY Paint. It's one of my favorite blue colors. It is the most gorgeous blue. It just is like an electrifying color that just kind of grabs your eye. And what I did was gave the body of one of them two coats of this. Now, when I get up to the ends there, I just try to be real careful not to get any on the handle. But DIY paint can be reactivated with water, so you can actually just wipe it off with a baby wipe if you do get it on there. Now, the next color that I'm going to use is a DIY paint also. It's called Mint Chip. I haven't been using a lot of bright colors lately, and I really don't know why, but it is time for me to break out of whatever funk that I've been in and bring a little color into my life. Also, before I painted either one of these rolling pins, I gave them several coats of that spray shellac. I like to use the bullseyes kind that I get at Walmart, and I get it where the spray paint is. It just says shellac on it, and it's kind of a yellowy can. It's great stuff, and it's my favorite sealer, personally. I'm going to use my heat gun just to hurry these along and get them good and dry so we can go to our next step. I'm going to just put a little bit of antique wax on the handles. I want them to be kind of the color that they are, but darkened up just a little bit. So I did take a baby wipe, and you can see here where I'm just kind of wiping and reactivating that DIY paint and getting it off the handle. And if you guys need any of this DIY paint, it's the best paint that I have ever used. It's my favorite paint. You can get it from Miss Lori at www.miltonsdaughter.com. And if you use code CraftyCathy10, you get 10% off your first order. Now, I'll leave all of that information I just gave you down in the description box below so that it's easy for you to find. So, I'm just going through here and getting all the paint off the handles. And I'm just going to take me a brush and my Waverly Antique Wax... And I'm just going to do the handles. I'm not even going to wipe the excess off. Now, this antique wax, I took water and I poured it inside my little jug of the antique wax. So, it's half wax and half water because I really wanted it to be watered down. Y'all will get to see one of the biggest mistakes, probably the biggest DIY mistake I have ever made here in just a minute. This was just a very off day. It was rough, and if anything could go wrong, this was absolutely the day that it did go wrong. Not with just my DIYs, but with everything it seemed like. It was just one of those days. And I'm going to use Big Top. It's a sealer, and it's also a DIY product. Now, DIY paint is clay-based, and you do have to seal it. And I'm going to use transfers on these, so you definitely want to put your big top on it and seal it before you do your transfers. It's just really thin. It's almost like a liquid patina type uh, consistency. And you just put it all over your little rolling pin here and get it sealed up real nice. I got these stencils off of Amazon, and they are in my Amazon store if you want them. And I got the chalk paste there too, and they were only like 11 bucks. There's actually three of these silk screen stencils on here. I'm going to use this one that looks like the sun rising and says Farm Fresh. 
If you've never used a silkscreen stencil, well, you're in for a treat. They are very easy to put on, and they are gorgeous every time. All you do is just lay it down on your project, and you put some of that chalk paste on it with your little squeegee, and you just put a very thin layer, and then you pull off your stencil very slowly so that you don't pull your paint up, and you have the most beautiful picture every time. To me, it's one of the easiest ways to make a DIY perfect and beautiful every time. And especially if you're trying to sell your DIYs, I mean, it's a win-win situation every time. Now on to the blue rolling pin. I wanted to use some of these transfers that was sent to me by Essential Stencils. <laughs> they have these beautiful cherry blossoms on them, and I thought that cherry blossom would look so pretty up against the blue of the rolling pin. But fate had other plans. Do you remember I told you if something could go wrong, it was going to go wrong on this day? Now, for some reason, it started pulling up my blue paint. So, I just totally threw away that transfer and went to my IOD transfers. But first, I had to repaint the area where the paint pulled up and reseal it and dry it again. Now, I don't know if it was something was left on that rolling pin that caused it to do it. I already had the thing sealed, so it shouldn't have done it. But, you know, IOD Transfers has never let me down, so I figured if anything was going to work, they were going to work. I used the one that came out of a book called Painterly Florals, and it's Lavender Stems. So I just laid my transfer down and very slowly started going over it because I didn't know if it was going to pull that paint up too. And it didn't, of course. The IOD laid down without a problem. I don't really think it was the transfer, to be honest with you. I, I think that something was left, some type of a grease, you know, rolling them biscuits now. There ain't no telling what these old country women used to roll them biscuits with. So, something must have been left on that rolling pin that caused that transfer not to stick. But anywho... Like I said, fate had other plans, and I like this just as well with the lavender on it, but I really thought that cherry blossom was going to be it up against the blue, but the purple's pretty there too. Well, it was driving me crazy to only have lavender on there. It just didn't look like it was enough to me, so I pulled off one of the little birds that was on that essential stencil, and it did work. Now, the bird stuck, so that's why I'm thinking that it was something that was left on this rolling pin because I put the bird in a different spot, and she stuck on there. But she looked all funny just sitting there amongst those lavenders by her little old self. So then I thought, mm, I think I'm going to add a branch to her to where it looks like she's sitting on a little branch. So I just cut off a piece of this branch that came from the essential stencils. And that way she looks like she's standing on something and her feet just wasn't all curled up and weird looking. And then to be on the safe side, I went ahead and put one more coat of that big top on both of them. And I hope you like these rolling pins. Now, this next project is the one that I told you that I messed up on really bad. It's a bread box that I bought probably about a year ago, I guess. Now, it had been in the woman's garage for a good 20 years, and I would say it's been outside on the front porch of my craft studio for a year. So, it was covered in pollen and dirt, and it was just disgusting. 
I cleaned it up real good, and I sanded it because that cow and that pig and the wording there was slightly raised. So I sanded it real good, cleaned it up again, and took all the brackets off, and then I put a couple of coats of shellac on it. Now, when the shellac dried, I used my paint sprayer. I have a paint sprayer called a Zoom, I think is what it's called, and you put your chalk paint in it, and you can paint bigger projects like this and furniture and stuff like that in a very little bit of time, you know. So I sprayed it a couple of coats with that white chalk paint, and I let it dry. Now, this is just the front part of it that had the cow and the goat on it. I brought it inside, and I used just this little hand sander kind of around the edges in a certain just little places because I wanted it to look like it was worn and not so fresh. Now, I'm going to use these silk screen stencils, and these are some of the ones that I got off of Amazon. I think they're beautiful, and I just laid all of those out the way that I wanted them to go on my project. I just absolutely love the ease of silk screen stencils. They're so easy to put on and apply, and like I said, they're perfect every time. So I laid everything out, and I put my black colored chalk paste on it because I thought that would be so pretty, and it would shine up against this white and be very vibrant looking. And let me tell you how I messed up. When I went to put all the pieces back together and put the brackets on, I realized that I had put this on upside down. Yes, I did. I put the barn, the tractor, the windmill, the whole nine yards on upside down. I was just disgusted at myself because normally I don't do that, y'all. I always check and I'm very careful because that will cost me a couple hours of work, like three or four hours extra of work to fix the problem. Now, my blood has been really low this week. I'm super anemic. Actually, it's been for the past few weeks. I've just felt like death warmed over. And I went last week to get my blood work drawn because I knew something was up. And my saturation percent that's running through my body is at 3%. It's super low. And the doctor is going to do several transfusions over the course of a couple these next few weeks. I'm going to have to have one transfusion per week. And I'm not sure how many sessions she's going to do of it, but she's also going to give me some blood and stuff and try to get my, my blood back up to a normal functioning level to where I feel like I'm human again. But guys, look how pretty this actually turned out. Now, this is before I even knew that there was a problem. I was just humming along, putting my little tractor on there, happy as could be, because this turned out gorgeous. Now, to correct the problem, what I had to do was sand all of the front of this off. And then after I sanded, I had to clean it. I had to put a sealer over it again. I had to respray it. <laughs> and so after I got it done, I went ahead and put it on again. And I was so upset with myself. And it still didn't turn out perfect. But this is what we're working with when you're... <laughs> severely anemic i guess this is about as good as you're gonna get i mean my brain has just been mush lately but guys i was so upset with myself i guess i shouldn't be so hard on myself i mean i'm a nurse i know what it's like when somebody's anemic it causes them not to be able to think because you don't have any blood circulating in your brain to help you think but i just can usually do better than this I don't know. But anyways, I learned my lesson, and I will always double check after that little event. And it's not going to be a fast process, but hopefully my doctor can get my blood straightened out in the next few weeks, and I can start feeling a little bit better and thinking better. <laughs> now, the very last one is going to be a simple hoop wreath. I took this little um, hoop that I got from the Goodwill, and I'm just going to cut off a little piece of foam, and I'm going to glue it to the bottom. I don't know if y'all can tell in my speech and stuff, too. It's just hard for me to, like, get the words out what I'm trying to say, so just please bear with me. But yeah, I just cut off a small piece of foam, and I glue it down to the bottom, 
And what I want to do is kind of camouflage it. I am going to put flowers on it, but I still want it camouflaged. And instead of grabbing like Spanish moss, I just grabbed this super moss, it's called. It's from Hobby Lobby, and it's really just Excelsior. And I just went over that and just kind of pushed it down into that glue so that it would uh, get stuck on there. And that way we can camouflage some of that, that foam. Now, I took two pieces of greenery that I've got, and I kind of curved them where they would go to the shape of the hoop, and I stuck them down in my foam. And I was trying to stay along with the colors of those rolling pins so that the whole DIY thing wouldn't look crazy. So I picked these petunias that are kind of like a purpley blue color. They're the color of one of those rolling pins, actually. And then I got these mint-colored azaleas. And I'm just going to cut off all of my stems so that they'll be easier to place in there. And I'm going to do these exactly like I do all of my florals. But first of all, I'm going to stick down some of this eucalyptus that I get from Walmart. And it's really just a filler. It's just going to kind of be for a background. And y'all know that the way that I do my florals is I always stick the tallest ones in the middle and then I kind of go down almost like a pyramid if you think about it. The tallest is right in the center and then you go down and you always do the same thing on the opposite sides. For example, if I put something in the very back on the right side, I'm going to put that exact same flower on the left side, you know, in that same spot. And that's how I always do my florals. Like if I put one thing in the front, the same thing's going to go in the back. It, the exact same thing. And I just kind of fluffed everything out and tried to make it look good. I'm going to take this gorgeous little plaque thingy that I got from Hobby Lobby. It says, The Word of God Stands Forever. It's normally 79 cents, but I got it when it was half off, so it was only like 40 cents. And what I did was just took one of those stems that I would normally throw away and it's got the wire in it, so it's going to help this stand up. I put some glue on there and stuck my wire down, and then I just took a couple little pieces of fabric and stuck it over it so that it would stay the way that I wanted it to. And I just stuck that little plaque down in there, and I thought this turned out adorable, and I hope you like this one. She speaks her mind, tough as nails and smooth as wine. We burn hard as kerosene. Baby, we got our own thing. She ain't skinny and night. Hey, if you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much for coming and spending your time with me to crap and just hang out tonight. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that little red subscribe button because I would love for you to be a part of our family here on Facebook. And also, it really helps me out if you do that. And if you give me the like button, that's the thumbs up button, it really helps push my videos out there in front of people who've never seen me before. My videos are every Monday and Thursday at 6.30, unless there's something else going on or if I'm a little bit slow and behind. And I am so sorry, just please have patience with me. And so I will be back here on Thursday at 6.30, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. I love y'all. Have a blessed day. He said, this stud ain't for sale. If you wonder what that noise is all the time in the back of my videos, this is it right here. 24-7, this is it right here.